Uh, Dan says he doesn't think he can do it. And Kate comes by from being banished by Locke two episodes ago. Uh, she knows they're up to something fishy and uh, looks inside Dan's bag and sees a bunch of gas masks. Uh, right after that, C.S. Lewis clobbers her over the head and knocks her out. Uh, he goes back to Ben and Juliet and he's all googly eyes over her. She's uh, looking through the microscope and when he goes to look through, he puts his hand on her. Obviously, uh, he has a big crush on her. And then Goodwin comes in and uh, Ben looks like the angry and jealous boyfriend. Um, we go back to another therapy session, and Harper's in a really bad mood, and she says, you look just like her, that's why Ben likes you. Um, now her um, is either referring to an ex-wife or an ex-girlfriend Ben has had. A lot of people think it's Annie, um, who, if you remember, in season three was in Ben's flashback when he was young, and it was her friend who had the doll. But most people seem to think that it's, um, and I think this too, that it's uh, Ben's mom. And as you can see in these two pictures, they look really similar. And also in uh, some of the pictures in Ben's house, uh, it looks just like Ben's mom. Harper then tells Juliet that she saw her sleeping with her husband, Goodwin. Um, maybe it was the time in season three when she was um, eating the ice cream, I think it was, in bed. Um, Harper says Ben will hurt him if she continues to see him. Uh, Ben's reading the book Valis again, which they show it twice now. It's obviously important. Um, and he seems very into it, unlike before. Locke gives him the rabbit, and Ben says, uh, this didn't have a number on it, <laughs> didn't it? Um, it's referring to, uh, if any of you have seen the orientation film uh, from Comic-Con that's going to happen this season, uh, it's showing two rabbits with the number 15 on them, uh, and obviously it's the same rabbit. One was just transported through time or uh, traveled. Uh, transported somehow. Uh, as always, Ben's playing mind games and says uh, Locke doesn't have a plan. Uh, so John asks if he has a plan and he says, oh, I always have a plan, uh, which is important to remember. Locke mentions the $3.2 million that Miles talked about and Ben looks up all of a sudden like wanting to help. Uh, ben says that they have a common enemy and Locke says, oh, you mean the people on the freighter? And Ben says, oh, no, not them. Uh, and this shows that the four that are on the island right now aren't as uh, evil as Ben makes them out to be. Uh, ben says not them, but the man they're working for. In this episode, we actually find out who that man is, and we find out whose freighter it is. Juliet and Goodwin are hanging out by the beach, and uh, Juliet gets out of the water, and notice the bottle of wine that Goodwin has. It's the exact same one from the monastery that Desmond used to work at. Uh, Goodwin lets us know that his job can kill everyone on the island if he flips the wrong switch. So obviously his job's like very important. Um, he also tells Juliet, uh, Ben has a huge crush on you and everyone knows it. And Juliet says, uh, uh, if Ben finds out, won't he be really mad? And Goodwin says, what can Ben do? Big mistake. Uh, it was funny, the very next scene showed Flight 815 crashing uh, from a dif different perspective uh, than from Season 3. Uh, ben chooses Goodwin to go, knowing in advance that he'll die, because he doesn't want Juliet having a relationship with him. Uh, Juliet and Jack see Kate as uh, she's squirming around on the ground from being hit, and uh, Juliet ends up wandering off. Ben probably figured he wasted enough time playing mind games, or maybe he just finished Valis. So, uh, uh, next scene shows Locke taking Ben out of his cell, and Locke asks him, How do I know you won't storm off when you get the chance? And he says, My people would have stormed this camp long ago if they wanted me. Uh, ben tells Locke to open the safe behind a picture. Uh, 36, 15, 28 is the combo. Um, I couldn't find any significance to what those numbers are. Um, I don't know if you guys might know one. Um, inside the safe, there's a tape and a folder, and Locke grabs the tape, and it's titled Red Sox. Um, it's a umatic tape, and it's the one that Ben shows Jack towards the beginning of Season 3. Um, Locke says, the Red Sox? And Ben says, oh, I taped over it. Uh, this means that the footage was taped... Um, after the time Jack saw the Red Sox game in Season 3, uh, that means this footage was taped recently, within a couple of weeks, um, at least in island time. Uh, the tape shows Widmore, and it, uh, he's beating up some guy, and Ben tells us he's the one trying to find the island, and that it's his freighter off the island, and that Widmore will do anything to exploit the island for personal gain, uh, just like I was talking about last recap. Uh, now this is a huge answer the writers gave us. Uh, I did not expect something like that to come out of Ben's mouth. Um, usually they don't give us a flat-out answer like that. Um, potentially everything Ben says, though, is a lie, so he can't be 100% sure that it is Widmore or that he owns the freighter. But it does make sense. After all, he was buying the 
a BlackRock Journal last episode. If what Ben is saying is true, then the economist from episode three, the one that Saeed's trying to kill and the one that Elsa's working for, would be Widmore. Uh, I think that Widmore is uh, helping Penny find the island, and she thinks that he's helping her find Desmond, but uh, he's keeping her in the dark as to what he's really trying to do um, by finding it. Uh, remember, she basically tells Charlie that it's not her boat. Maybe she doesn't even know it's her father's. Um, I'm thinking that maybe towards the end of season six, she'll have to make a decision between her father or Desmond, and most likely pick Desmond. Also, does anyone think that uh, the real Henry Gale, the one that parachuted to the island, was uh, Widmore's first attempt to get to the island? Um, if Ben has his tape, do you also think he's seen the tape that Juliet made for Jack telling him uh, to kill Ben during the operation? Maybe that's why during the surgery, Ben asked Jack to leave the room and uh, so he can talk to Juliet alone. As for the person who's blindfolded, we aren't really sure who it is yet. Um, some people think it looks like past Desmond, but it wouldn't really make sense. Um, I guess it looks like him a tiny bit, but some people think it looks like Ben Affleck. <laughs> uh, ben says that he's sorry he didn't tell Locke sooner, um, that all he, it was all he had to bargain with. Yeah, right. Uh, Locke then asks, uh, who was your man on the boat? And Ben says, oh, you'll have to sit down for this one. I know it seems a little too obvious that it is Michael on the boat, but it has to be him. IMDB has him in the cast uh, list for the past few episodes as credit only, uh, but for next week's episode, he gets regular cast credit, uh, as you can see here. Believe it or not, there's actually a lot of fans that don't know Michael's coming back this season, so I'm imagining it will be a big surprise for them if it turns out to be Michael, which it most likely will. Um, the writers try to fool the hardcore fans a lot, but it's pretty hard to fool a Seatron every time. Some people want to believe that it's Charlie or Christian Shepard even, um, because the next week's preview says that it'll be someone uh, who we never thought, thought we'd see their face again, but it has to be Michael.